you know, going through a divorce is a very, very traumatic moment in anyone's life. And a lot of times, depending on the decisions that you make with going, while you're going through the process, they can have a lot of negative impacts on you financially, health-wise, relationship-wise, and family-wise, okay? And I'm going to give you guys four things that I think you should do if you're going through a divorce that can benefit you in the short and the long term years after the divorce is over, okay? And I use, these were like three, guy, four guiding principles rather, that I use while going through my divorce and it's helped me, helped me go through the process and it's definitely helped me years after the divorce has been over with, okay? And the first thing I want you guys to do is no one, which is by far the hardest thing to do because coming to grips with everything is the most challenging of all. And the, the number one thing to do is come to grips with the reality that it is over. Accept the fact that the marriage is over. And even though, I, like I said again, it's very difficult to accept that the marriage is over, you can't do any kind of planning or anything until you accept that. A lot of times we feel like we can reconcile, we can work through it, things will get better. Maybe I'm going through a phase, maybe they're going through a phase, you don't know. And you question everything a lot and you do there's a lot of back and forth where you already know, really for the most part, it's not going to get any better because Typically, a lot of times, you'll try to do things, compromise, try to work on it, pray on it, dream on it, sleep on it, and none of that stuff works. But again, the first thing you got to do is admit that it is over. Doesn't make you mean you're a failure. Doesn't mean the marriage is a failure. It just means it didn't work out for whatever reason it didn't. But you have to come to grips that it is over. And from that point, you can, you know, logically, as much as possible, start planning and put things in motion the correct way. The second thing is, guys, and this is super important, you got to get proper counsel. You got to talk to someone that can give you sound legal advice. A lot of times we talk to people that are close friends or family members for us. They mean well, they love us, but they don't know the damn law. And remember, laws can vary from state to state. And by you talking to certain people telling you to do this, leave that alone, move forward, let bygones be bygones, that's not the way to go about it. Get you proper legal counseling. The money that you spend to do that will be crumbs that you won't lose going about it the wrong way or not talking to somebody on the front end about it. You got to get sound legal counsel to get you the pros and cons, the things that worst case scenario can happen, best case scenario can happen, things that can't even happen at all. Get get some sound legal advice, okay guys? I can't stress that to you enough. It's cool to have a support team with people that care and love about you, but again, that emotion of caring and love about you is not legal. All right, so we got to make sure we talk to the right people that can give us the right advice for us to move forward, okay? The third thing, guys, and this right here is super crucial because a lot of people fall into this trap, and that's don't go broke fighting. I understand how it is to work hard and build certain things up, and you've sit there accumulated and and, and, and and over the years make sacrifices to make certain things happen. Guys, you're going to take a loss in the divorce. You're going to take a loss, maybe a small loss, big loss, whatever. The sooner you can come to the grips that you're going to take a L, a loss somewhere, the better off you will be. Because what happens is a lot of times people go broke. He's trying to keep this. She's trying to take this. I work hard for it. There's no way the hell we can do it. And you're going back and forth arguing. And what you're, and definitely what are you doing? Accumulating legal fees, right? It's not worth it, guys. It's not worth it. You can get another car. You can get another house. You can get a, a whole another career. But you can't get a what? Another you. You cannot get another you. And you do not want to come out of this situation. You got serious health problems. You're financially ruined. And depending on where you're at in age, especially if you're over 40, it's a whole lot more difficult to recover when you're 40, 50, 60 years old from a divorce than it is when you're younger. So don't put yourself in a, uh, in a position financially because you want to hold on and you want to keep things that you can get again. And never put you in, never be able to recover from it. So remember, do not go broke fighting, okay? And the fourth thing is, guys, you got to plan for life after divorce, okay? How you're gonna be living, how you're gonna be working, um, um, where you're gonna be, you know, where you're gonna be staying, things like that. How the children are gonna be, things like that. Um, uh, mentally, what are you gonna be doing? If you're gonna be exercise, keep yourself in shape. You're gonna get yourself some therapy. You're gonna do some some uh, career planning, things like that. You got to be getting yourself ready for life after divorce, especially if you've been in a situation over 10 years, you know, even one of one to five years can be enough, but just when you've been with a person in a situation and it's been, you know, uh, a routine all this time and that's changed, 
you got to prepare for this upset with it. And, and that transition is is uh, is challenging. You know, I went through it and everything. I went from uh, me and my ex-wife, we, um, we, we shared joint legal custody, uh, joint physical custody, joint physical custody uh, w w with the boys, but they lived with me during the week. And we went from, I would help her cook dinner every now and then to I got to cook dinner every day because they would go to my they go to my ex-wife on the weekend and then that was a transition to me it wasn't that difficult because i mean if i can you know be a business owner you know cooking dinner at night you know want to stretch but it's different right then time wise you know because again sometimes you're like hey go talk to your mom you can't really you know now it's like hey you know you're you're on one here i had to go through all those kind of transitions and a lot of times uh people have more drastic transition than that. So mentally, start mentally preparing yourself for life after the marriage. How are things going to be different? What's going to be your new normal, okay? So I do think if you try those four things, number one, admitting that, uh, acknowledging and admitting that the marriage is over. Number two, make sure you get proper counsel. Number three, don't go broke trying to fight or trying to go through the process. And number four, which I think is super important, make sure you start planning for life after the marriage, okay? After the divorce is over, start getting your plan together, how everything is going to go. I think if you follow those four simple pieces of advice, it will help you out. Now, it sounds simple, but I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging. But I know you guys will be okay if you try to just stay focused on those four things as much as possible, regardless of how much other funny, fuzzy stuff is going in between, okay? Take care of yourself, guys. I hope that information helped you out. Talk to you soon.